Good afternoon and welcome to Catholic Moms Group. It's Dorothy Polarski, and I'd like to welcome each and every one of you joining us today. As you join us, I would ask that you say hello in the chat. Um, tell us where you're from, if you're from Scarborough or if you're from Uganda. Last week we had someone from Ireland. <laughs> we wow. had people from just a whole bunch of different places. Uh, so please do say hello. Oh, there's Janice from Milton. Hello, Janice. Great to see you. Um, we love hearing from you. Um, from Trisha from the Niagara Falls area. Hello, Trisha. Good to see you here. I also wanted to extend a big warm welcome to Maya Lynn Nezic, our guest today. Uh, hello, Maya. Uh, where are you? Hi. Where are you now? You're where? You're. In I live in Caledon, Ontario. It's just north of Brampton. So, so we're the uh, the um, the big super red zone here for COVID. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank goodness we're all behind the screen. So we're, pr oh, look at yeah. this. We've got uh, Daniela from Puerto Rico. Yay. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! And we've got Irene from South Africa. Hello, Irene from South Africa. Wow. Yeah, That's hello, great. Martine from uh, St. Peter and Paul uh, in Mississauga. Uh, <laughs> we also have Christina from Rockland County, New York. Catherine from Burlington. It's an exciting so session today. <laughs> I love wow. It. I love So when I make reference to the local dollar store, no one's <laughs> yeah. the people from uh, Puerto Rico, sorry. Oh, yeah. uh, Christy Rosillo is here. Hello. Hi. Christy. And we've got Carla from Houston. Hello, Carla from Houston. It's um it's just it's wonderful to have you all here. So I, I do want to tell wow. you a little bit about our ministry and why we're here. So uh, again, for those of you that missed it, my name is Dorothy Polarski, and I work in partnership with the Archdiocese of Toronto, helping parishes start mothers groups. And so why are we here on screen? Why are we here? Well, COVID broke out. Uh, we've got you know a lot of different mothers groups right across the Archdiocese. Um, a lot of them can't meet right now because of COVID. So we wanted the moms in our archdiocese to know you are not alone. Uh, we're still ministering uh, to you. We love you. We care for you. And we started doing this every single week once COVID broke out. I was inspired by uh, Cardinal Collins and his faithful masses uh, day in and day out. They're a real anchor for me. And so we thought, our ministry has got to do something for the moms in our ministry. And then I thought, heck, I've got a Zoom account. Why not invite more people? <laughs> you know, so I just started opening it up. And uh, I'm really honored and grateful that you're here. Uh, I'm just thrilled to see people from, you know, South Africa, Mexico, Houston. Patricia um, <laughs> says, I like your rooster. I like him too. Isn't he cute? <laughs> <laughs> my, my husband told me too that a rooster is actually no. a Christian symbol. Um, so hello to everybody. I'm just going to share one or two very quick slides about our ministry. Um, it won't take a lot of your time. I promise it won't take a lot of your time. So again, our ministry is, I love my Catholic Moms Group, but if you look up the URL, it's catholicmomsgroup.com. And we are on a mission to revive the vocation of motherhood. You know, like a, a lot of people sort of see motherhood as just a series of tasks or, you know, if you were to think about the secular view of motherhood and the Catholic view of motherhood, um, you know, that we want to turn to Our Lady. We want to become more like her. We, we want to consecrate our children to our Blessed Mother. Um, you know, I think that feminism has really, really just ripped the soul out of a lot of women and a lot of families. And so um, I guess five years ago, I approached the Cardinal and said, uh, Cardinal Collins, can we please start a ministry? I've been hosting my own mother's group now for 25 years, believe it or not. Uh, I said, I'm going to die hosting mother's groups. I love you guys. And so we, 
we help parishes start moms groups. Our groups, some of them are moms and tots. Um, some of them are more like Oasis style with no children. Others are a combination. Our ministry really encourages multi-generational groups. Um, we, we, we have a strong conviction that when you have two generations, both generations win right? Uh, the elder women can mother the younger women who maybe don't have time to do the baking and set up the coffee or get there on time because their child has an ear infection all night or has been vomiting. And so, you know, the, the elders can help. And so it revitalizes their lives. And then the young moms get all this beautiful support and all these beautiful relationships are formed. Um, we have developed a, a, a variety of different tools. We have a publication, How to Start a Mother's Group. We've got a study guide. We have a full kit. We would ship you a box of everything that you need to run a mother's group for well over a year. We have hosted several Catholic Mothers Summits and uh, they've been extremely fruitful. And so thank you for joining us here today. Uh, Midday Moms is an offshoot to Catholic Moms Group. Um, we're here as a result of COVID and we're, we're glad that you have joined us. It's really an honor and a pleasure. I hope you follow us on Instagram. If you look up Catholic Moms Group, uh, like us on Facebook, that would be super. So. Thank you all for joining us, and without further ado, I would like to introduce formally uh, Maya. Maya Lynn Nezic is a wife to Edward and a mother of one handsome little guy named Anton. Although they reside on a small suburban Caledon property, she keeps four hens and a rabbit, to give her that country living feeling. She is a domestic engineer at heart and occasionally puts her Bachelor of Fine Arts and teaching degrees to good use, offering homeschool classes to her nieces and nephews. Before Maya started her family in 2016, she served the church through various ministries as assistant at chaplain at York University and Dean of Studies at Seat of Wisdom College and more recently taught French with the to Toronto Catholic District School Board working closely with administration on the school's religious formation program. She remains home with her son, homemaking and raising a future saint. Maya co emceed the Dynamic Women of Faith Conference with Dorothy in 2013. She has shared her stories of encounters with saints at Our Lady of Peace uh, Mothers Group. She was also the beauty ambassador for the Dynamic Women of Faith Conference in 2020 until the pandemic hit, but hopes to resume her service to future Dynamic Women of Faith events. Her future goals include offering more home decorating consultations, finding new avenues to bring real and lasting beauty into our daily lives, through a small online business. And I gotta tell you all, I can't resist because I'm just so proud to say this, because I shouldn't be proud, but I am. <laughs> Maya is uh, my lovely cousin's daughter. So uh, I've had the great joy of watching Maya grow up and it, it kind of scares me because it tells you how old I am. So anyway, <laughs> anyway um, thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Hi, Liz Garcia. Hi, Michelle. Um, all of you, a big, big, warm welcome. So Maya, yes. you're here on Midday Moms. How it's a, it's a real rush, I gotta tell you. <laughs> How do we beautify our homes? For oh our my gosh. <laughs> well, um, I, I'm first really, you know, very grateful that Dorothy asked me um, to do this. Uh, it's kind of like um, second nature, beautiful, beautiful things and um, creating beauty. It really is just just the way I see the world. So I really take it for granted. And uh, those of you who get, you know, break into uh, cold sweats when you see a glue gun or when someone <laughs> starts talking about the craft aisle at the dollar store, I, I don't want to do that to you today. I, I would like to, um, I'd like to invite all of us, uh, crafters and non-crafters alike, 
to think about Advent, um, maybe with some new eyeglasses on. Um, so, uh, yeah, how are we going to beautify our house? I have some, I have three main points that I wanted to cover. Um, luckily, Dorothy asked me to write a blog post to go along with, uh, with our talk today. So I did all my sort of thinking ahead of time and was able to really, you know, kind of clear up how I felt about Advent myself and how I like to approach the season. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't know. What do you want to do, Dorothy? You want to dive in? I want you to <laughs> dive right in. I, I just okay. you want to say hello to Kiera from Newmarket. <laughs> Kiera went through our How to Start a Mother's Group workshop, and I'm really hoping, Kiera, we get you started in Newmarket as a mother's group leader. Anyway, yeah, just dive right in. Okay. Um, so Dorothy did mention that, um, that I, I have one son. I started my family when I was 39, so um, I wish I had... Uh, 39 sons, but <laughs> for now I have one. Um, but also that kind of gives you perspective as to, you know, what I'm able to do in my own home. Um, so I'm just very, very aware of what it's like to have seven children or five or four, um, or to be working and to have uh, children. So by no means do I want to set myself as an example to you, but just, you know, a, a, a lady who likes to make stuff pretty, uh, maybe you can um, take away something today. Um, please indulge me with this short reading from uh, a beautiful book called Donkey Bells. I'm not sure. I think you do get it reversed. It's uh, Catherine Doherty's. It's sort of um, a, a, a collection of her writings um, and all the different uh, Advent and Christmas season. Um, so uh, Catherine Doherty is uh, considered a servant of God in the church. So her cause for canonization is in progress, um, but uh, very dear to my heart, the Apostle at Madonna House. So um, please uh, uh, hear this as a sort of preparation and a background to where I'm coming from. Is your heart ready for Christmas? What kind of birthplace are you providing for the Christ child? Is the straw shiny and golden and clean? Is the manger solid? and will it hold up under his weight? Are the animals quiet, scrubbed, brushed? Have you made the door to the stable of your heart secure against the cold winds of apathy, selfishness, indifference, so that these cannot penetrate? Is the dry wood of your sacrifices, your penance, your prayers, ready to be lit to provide warmth in that cold stable? Are you ready for the coming of love? Behold, he comes in the womb of a woman. You will catch your first glimpse of love on the straw of a stable. There he is, emptying himself, the Lord of hosts, becoming out of love for us a child. This child who lies in the manger possesses all power and glory. He has dominion over life and death. Nothing escapes his care. He made all the laws which brought the universe into existence. They were created by him and are subject to him. It is the same child, the same humble carpenter of Nazareth, the same man who died naked on a cross, who possesses all power and glory. So, Advent, it's not Christmas. It's, um, it's preparing us to receive this incredible gift. And it's not a surprise every year that it's going to be Christmas. So we can't pretend like, you know, like we're the, um, the Hebrew people, like we don't know what's happening and who he is when he does come. But that's what the church asks us to do is in, to enter into a time of waiting with the Hebrew people, with the Holy Family. And, um, the title of this little uh, reflection is called, Is Your Heart Ready for Christmas? And the question is, is your, is your home ready for Christmas? That's where I'm coming from. So um, I'm going to adjust my, my camera. I'm going to go stand over there behind the, the island and show you a few ways that we could maybe prepare. So just bear with me. This is my high-tech setup. <laughs> Excuse me. 
All right, I think that's good. Uh, I noticed someone said they'd never heard of Catherine Doherty. Um, so uh, Catherine Doherty uh, was a Russian baroness um, and she, she lived, she died in the eighties, I believe. So she's pretty, she's a modern contemporary um, example to us. Um, she uh, started this apostolate, various apostolates, but the one that I was referring to Madonna house is out in Combermere, Ontario. Um, in the Madawaska Valley, and it's a group of lay people with priests um, who live together in community, and they basically live the gospel with their lives. And um, they, when I think about Christmas, I think about my time at Madonna House because they lived the liturgical season in such a beautiful way, and and they call their way Nazareth. They call their their spirituality the spirituality of Nazareth where you're with the Holy Family. It's, it's simple, it's ordinary, and it's um, all integrated, everything you do. So it's really, for me, it, it was such a spiritual formation. Um, so I, um, I highly recommend this book uh, as, a, as a way to enter into Advent. Um, I put a link in the, um, in the blog post. So if you can check back in a couple days, I believe it'll be up on the website. Um, for you to have a look, but um, so there were, there's three ways that I was going to um, suggest that we enter into Advent in our homes. The first one is because it's not Christmas, we want to prepare ourselves by holding Christmas back and making that exciting, right? Um, the music is on the radio, this, the malls are decked out, and it's fun. Like, I mean, I catch myself listening to um, 98.1, <laughs> just singing along, and it's really great. But, you know, the other day, uh, O Come Emmanuel, not O Come Emmanuel, a Christmas hymn came on, O Come Let Us Adore Him, or something like that. And I turned it off, and I was like, how bizarre is that? I'm turning off an, a Christian hymn on a secular radio station. Um, but anyway, that's not the point I'm trying to make. But in our homes... We want, to, we want to wait for that. We want to wait for that celebration because that's what's going to make it really great. It's, you know, it's um, waiting is part of being a Christian and hoping, right? So um, how do we spend our, the next, well, it's not Advent yet. In a couple of weeks it will be, but how can we prepare? Well, the first thing I'm going to say is get your shopping done now, right now. Like just do it. You know it's coming. You know who you need to buy presents for getting out of the way so that you're not running around, you know, in, in that time of, of high stress and in that time when you're supposed to be sort of settling down and, and cal calming down and getting in touch with those places in yourself that, you know, might need a little bit of, of um, rearranging and uh, reorienting so that we could orient ourselves towards the the one who's coming um should i keep going <laughs> yeah. oh um dorothy i think you're muted hey. or, well, that's a good thing hey. <laughs> when i'm muted that's a good thing um okay uh, so, so vesna's put the vesna's put the um uh link to madonna house here so for those thank you friends, vesna want to know a little bit more about um, Madonna House, you can, you can click there. Uh, hi, Claude, it's good to see you. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Maura. Uh, great to see hi, you. Hi, Maura. <laughs> uh, but yes, you, you mentioned that you had uh, sort of three primary ways um, yeah. to teach us. So yeah, keep on. Okay. Thank you. I don't want to repeat everything that's in the blog post, but I'm just going to, for those of you, you know, just to give, give you an idea of where I'm coming from. The first one I mentioned already, visual restraint. So let's hold back decorating as much as we can. I know my sister kind of laughs at that because her seven kids are like, yeah, whatever, they're not gonna let me not put the Christmas tree up. But at the very least, don't turn the lights on until Christmas Eve. Like that has to, you know, there has to be some drama. We're Catholic, we can, we can afford to be a little dramatic in our homes. Um, so, so let's pull back on the decorating as much as possible. Um, 
But um, the other thing that I think is really important is to start preparing the home for what Christmas is bringing. The light of the world is coming into uh, the light. Uh, Christ is the light and he's coming into the world. And um, so I remember going to my, my Bapcha's house for Vigilia. And um, every, so that's uh, my Bapcha's, my grandmother, Vigilia is a Christmas Eve Polish traditional uh, meal. The house sparkled with such intensity because everything that reflected light had been washed and polished. So we're talking windows, right? Let the light in. We're talking chandeliers and light fixtures. All of the dust was sort of removed from that. Um, any windows in the house, window panes from, from cabinets, uh, the crystal shone so bright, magnificently. She had a beautiful, huge crystal uh, chandelier in the dining room. And it, it, it blazes, you know, when it's clean. Um, so for me, I've continued that tradition. I polished my silver. I clean my, all my light fixtures. Um, and I do it slowly. I mean, I, I, I'm going to start now as soon as I, you know, my next day for, for doing house chores because I know that Christmas is coming and I know that I want those things to be ready and prepared and beautiful. Um, so that's that one thing. And the other thing is to put away clutter. So um, just to kind of calm down your environment, I have a, a lot of green plants in the house. I'm gonna put them all upstairs in a sunny room um, because there's gonna be more decorations coming out. And I just feel like the plants, they just add chaos. They don't. They don't contribute to the Christmas decorating. So I remove those during Advent so that the house looks bare. And then when the Christmas decorations start coming out, um, you know, you feel that there's that festivity um, because of the decorating. I don't want it to, uh, I don't want it to just be overwhelming. We have a, a cathedral ceiling in the family room that's a double level um, ceiling. And we have a very large tree and I don't need, uh, you know, the the fern and the <laughs> the other plants there to complicate the visual uh, beauty of the tree. So can I ask you a quick, quick, quick question? So are you are you saying that we shouldn't do any decorating during Advent? Is that what you're saying? As much as possible, I'm saying to undecorate the house, to de-decorate, to take away that decorative bowl, um, to put away your plants, yeah, to make the house look a little bit bare and to, to, because what you're doing is you're starting over, you're resetting. It's a new liturgical year. And, um, you when know, do the, when do the Christmas decorate, like your Santa and all these things, yeah. when, does, when does that come out? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm speaking for myself. I have cultivated an Advent posture over the years. And I have learned that um, for Santa example, for example, with Santa Claus, I'm not afraid of Santa. He was a saint. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, we celebrate Santa Claus or St. Nicholas on the feast day, December 6th. And um, so we, we talk him up at home. He's part of our, the excitement of Christmas. And he's going to visit again on Christmas Eve and bring presents for Jesus's birthday. I mean, that's just how we, I'm a kid is three, like I could pull anything past him, right? So it's not that complicated. But um, uh, yeah, like it's, it, it's, uh, that comes out December 6th. And then you know what, near Christmas time, I usually put all my Santa paraphernalia away, because I really want the focus to be on the empty manger and the baby that is placed in the empty manger on Christmas morning. So the decorations are out. My nativity set is set up um, beginning on an advent, but I only put out the, the animals and the manger. And then I slowly build up to Our Lady and St. Joseph throughout the, the weeks. And then of course, at the very, you know, Christmas day, our Lord comes into the cradle. And I make this manger part of our spiritual journey. So we add pieces of straw to the manger um, to symbolize a sacrifice that we might have done throughout the day. So um, I'll get into how I introduce that. But I mean, it's just a concept and idea that anyone can really do. 
I happen to have straw and hay because I have chickens. So if you don't have any, you don't have any <laughs> hay lying around, you can use tinsel, um, which is also really sweet and it sparkles. So that's nice. But yeah, here's another manger I have. So I have a, I have a collection of nativity scenes. Um, I'll show you one beautiful one. Here's, um, these are from Madonna House gift shop actually. Um, so they're, they're used and they were touched up um, for reselling. But um, I'll, I'll put this in a prominent place in the house and the manger stays empty, of course. Um, but it's, uh, it's a centerpiece. And I don't just have this one. I have another one with the whole crew. <laughs> and I put that also in a, on my mantle. Um, and I usually put, um, if not a whole nativity set, I'll put the infant or just an empty manger in each bedroom. And on Christmas morning, I go and I, I put baby Jesus in everybody's crib. Um, it's part of, yeah, it's part of my tradition, my personal tradition. I um, also want to show you this really beautiful um, little handmade pottery. Uh, so this is Joseph and Mary, and her, uh, her womb has a little pop-out. And at the back, <laughs> I've never seen that before. I know, I just, it kills me. And oh so baby God. Jesus, yeah, at Christmas, you turn it around and there he is. Somehow. Anyway, it's the cutest thing. So, you know, these little Advent things I've collected over the years. I don't expect you to go find this at HomeSense. There's no way <laughs> you'll find them. But anyway, now I can't put it back together. But um, yeah, so I already talked about cleaning um, and putting away clutter. And um, the next thing I would say is having a focus. So, I mean, I've already touched on that. Um, the empty manger. I, I don't understand why baby Jesus would be in the manger when your Christmas tree goes up. I mean, we're smarter than that, you know? We're smarter than that. So let's tell the story. Let's tell the story of Christmas in our homes with our decorating. Um, so I don't, I don't think I can convince you to not decorate, but I can try to encourage you not to put on the lights, to leave baby Jesus out until his birthday right? Because he's li literally not even out of her womb yet. Um, and um, there's, there's other things that we can do to help us with that. The focus of the Advent wreath. So um, I'm sure everyone, well, most people have some sort of Advent wreath. And I, I think, I remember thinking, how am I going to find a wreath with four candle holders embedded in it? And um, they were hard to find. Sometimes the like Catholic bookstores would have them and they were nothing special, but I just needed that ring with the four <laughs> candle holders and um, it's really overrated. So I'm going to show you a really easy thing you can do at home. Um, first thing you have to do is find something round. <laughs> so it needs to be either a platter, um, a, um, what do you call those, tray. Um, I found a couple things in my, in my cellar. So this is just a random dish with a pedestal. Um, you can use a galvanized, uh, whatever, aluminum bowl from the dollar store that I purchased. So this, if you have a country vibe at home, this would be cute. Um, you can use a cake plate. I'm not going to dismantle it, but there's a cake plate here. That would be really good too. And <clears throat> what I've been doing for the last few years is I just use this candelabra, which is a beautiful crystal candelabra. And um, I stick my candles in there. Where are my candles? Oh, here. So I have my candles. There's a fifth spot in the middle which um, I, I don't know why I didn't pull a fifth one out there, but let's say that was white. Um, and this is, my, this is my advent setup. Now, the only thing that's missing is greenery, but basically that's all you need to have. You need your four weeks of advent, and some churches do a Christ candle. So on Christmas day, they light the, the last, the fifth candle. 
Um, but traditionally, it's just four. And also, traditionally, we have three violet and one rose candle. But these are very hard to find. So don't worry about it. Just go with white, go with tapers, or go with, um, you know, your pillar candles that we all, well, not all of us have them, but <clears throat> I want to show you something. So this is what I'm going to do this year because I have a three-year-old and sometimes you'll find him sitting on my dining room table. So I don't want to have like my crystal can chandel candelabra out there this year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to borrow some Epsom salts <laughs> from my bathtub. And those are going to hold my candles in place. So actually it's really pretty. It looks like snow. And now that I look at it, my son is going to definitely play with that. So maybe I'll have to keep this on the counter. But anyhow, and here we go. Here's my advent wreath for this year. Um, here it is. Now I need the greenery. So if I was doing this one, which is a smaller bowl, I'm going to just do this for you quickly. This is a Costco size Epsom salts. I wish I had enough time to use this with my baths, but that <laughs> doesn't happen too often. Yeah, so here, <laughs> here's another version. <laughs> wow. That wasn't hard. No. I didn't, I didn't pull out a glue gun. <laughs> I didn't buy anything. I had all this stuff. Well, okay, you, if you don't have tapers or this, okay, you need to go buy candles. But um, I don't know. I'm going to be happy with this personally. Now, for your greenery, um, this ugly thing is from our favorite uh, dollar store. And I just left the tag on so you could see. Uh, half of the part of the trick with the dollar store is knowing what not to buy because something's you think, oh, look, that's kind of cute. But then, you know, it just looks cheap. The thing about dollar store stuff is you have to um, use it and camouflage it. So it's more like a tool, like an instrument. It shouldn't stand on its own as something, um, you know, because it's not beautiful, right? Sorry, I'm just going to do this. So this is what I'm going to do with all honesty. <clears throat> this is one of those... Um, uh, wreaths that's all wiry and the, the branches don't look real. They're kind of plasticky, um, but they're wired. So the great thing about the wire is that you go into your garden or you go into your neighbor's garden at night when nobody can see you and you take some snippings of their um, hedges. <laughs> this is my, um, <laughs> this is my, what do you call it? Those cedar, cedar bushes. I have five or six cedar bushes. So I just took a bunch and the wire of the wreath is just gonna tie it down. So it's not, it's not meant to be, it's meant to kind of um, just secure my real stuff, right? So here is another one. I'm gonna go quickly just so for the sake of uh, not boring you to death. That's my so, Maya, I'm just going to refer to some people are saying a few things in the chat. So I'm going to, while yeah. you're doing that. Sure. Um, so Catherine says, I love the idea of having an empty manger out during Advent. Um, someone's asking, are there any special foods for us to be bringing in now? That's another question. Um, we also leave the baby out of the manger. He comes out on Christmas Eve. Under the Christmas tree, there's an empty cradle and baby Jesus is there for Christmas morning. It's the very first present everybody gets is hugs and kisses. Then we say, hmm. thanks, prayer for his coming. Um, Michelle says, I like the idea of holding back on decorations, even though I love decorating. So do my kids, um, do I explain to my kids why we're holding back? the same way you explain to wait for Jesus to celebrate? Um, so there are some questions and thoughts for you. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, to me, this is, it's, it's Christmassy, but 
I, I lit all four, but I really like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow three of them out just so that it kind of looks like Advent. But even the candles, like it gives you that excitement. Like the kids have to know that we don't light them all up. Maybe that was a bad idea. I'm gonna look all smoky and dramatic here. Oh, you look fine. You know, don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> those are no, but those are great. Uh, those are wonderful, wonderful tips for the Advent wreath. That's for sure. Yeah. That's the so other fun. thing I want to point out is okay. So we we are lacking some purple and pink, and of course, um, we want to we want to keep the mindset of Advent being a time of it's a penitential season. It's we were I dressed <laughs> liturgically correct for this presentation, but um, yeah, it's a time of preparation. But it's it's a different kind of preparation than Lent. Lent is a time of of it's a different type of of um, of fasting and penance um, because we are we're 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 just about to be forgiven. So there's that sort of that a different type of anticipation, but we also need to really delve into our sins during lent during advent we are we know we we're excited because we want to make ourselves ready for that baby and so i was thinking a little bit about my pregnancy and with my son and those last weeks before he was born of preparing and they they call it nesting right and you're kind of trying to anticipate what it's going to be like when he's here and what do I need to do to make the house ready for him? Um, cooking meals, making sure all of his clothes are clean, the sheets, his bed is set up. We have a plan for, you know, um, whatever, things are in place. So there's a busyness there. You're not just kind of like do 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 waiting around. Um, so Advent is busy, but we shouldn't be frantic. We should really be focused um we don't want to come by surprise we don't want to be like the foolish virgins who you know are still running crazy on christmas eve that's just not it's also not helpful for the kids you know because they could really they can really re, uh, resent that that christmas mom is crazy at christmas you know <laughs> uh oh <laughs> that would be me <laughs> um, I, I don't want to i just want to encourage you to keep on going it's it's 20 to 3 and we usually okay. up shortly so just be okay aware. wow time flies when you're yeah, yeah no no uh, we okay can, we probably need to have you back sometime <laughs> <laughs> so um the uh, the last thing so i talked about visual restraint we talked about a focus so the advent wreath um but then also the nativity scene um, and building that up. And then the third way that I would say is something new that they're, so the baby's new, right? The baby's new, the baby has new paraphernalia when the baby's coming, a crib and so on and clothes. Um, so how do we make our houses kind of reflect that, that excitement that something, you know, even just hospitality, we're gonna have people over, you gotta stock the pantry with delicious things and be ready and have the liquor cabinet you know, <laughs> full of things to offer your guests. Um, so, you know, the kids need to see that. And I think that's part of it, but also an advent calendar. So right here, I have uh, one that I bought at the superstore. And these are just little boxes that slide out. And then you could put small things inside of the boxes. So it's not very big. It's only maybe two inch, two square inch box. Um, so what I did with this when I used it uh, last year is I put little reflections inside for each day and a chocolate for my son and my husband um, because I made it I you know I made it for them and I so I didn't include myself but in previous years what I've done is I have um, wrapped up 20 you know how many days there are of Advent gifts um, one was a gingerbread house one day was um, a, a, a book on how to play the ukulele, like little things that weren't over the top, but things that we could do as a family and enjoy together, but also a rosary. And when it was Our Lady's Feast Day, um, two different feast days in December, I put a, a, a rosary and we prayed a decade. So it wasn't always things. It was sometimes just a, a little incentive to do something. Um, so I mentioned St. Nicholas is on the 6th of December, 
And um, this is just uh, actually like a Father Christmas decoration. And I added this red um, hat for the bishop's hat. But as you can see, I, I, I kind of disguised him to make him look like St. Nick. So here's his regular hat with the bell. And then I, I made the little um, uh, bishop's uh, staff for him with a pipe cleaner and a straw. So like, it, I, I'm just showing you that um, this was a piece of, of felt. I just made it into a triangle and wrapped it around his jolly old head. And now he's a bishop. <laughs> so, I just, just keep it simple, you know? You don't have to fly to Poland to get a real one. Um, <laughs> there's also, um, if, you, if you do have a, like a European deli near your place, you'll find these chocolate guys dressed as bishops, St. Nicholas. But you can also just, these are from, um, these are from winners or whatever. But I could easily just, sorry, again, make him a bishop's hat and just glue that or tape that on just for the for the visual for the kids to know he's a bishop um and again that that goes in the baggie and this becomes part of my advent calendar treat this year my advent calendar is going to be tied to my um blanket ladder you know what these are right they're just decorative blanket ladders and so i have several little bags um that I've collected over the years. I don't care if things match or not. I have black and white. I have polka dots from my wedding. <laughs> you know, like I'm just gonna have these all suspended here with string and tags with the days, the date, the date on it. So here's some tags also purchased at the dollar store. And um, yeah, I'll just do this. It'll be like it's adorable, right? Like it, it's not. And I didn't, I didn't need to buy anything because I have, I have a lot of stuff, but it's really nothing. It's just pennies. You know, you can even do paper lunch bags if you wanted to. But yeah, so I'll put the days of the advent here, starting with the 29th, I think, of November. Um, and uh, my son will have to learn self-restraint and not open them all at once. But um, yeah, it'll be... It'll be um, something new for him, something to engage us. Um, but it'll involve um, St. Nicholas. It'll involve um, the prayer of St. Andrew, which is the 30-day novena leading up to Christmas. That's my favorite. Uh, such a powerful, powerful novena. So beautiful. I only heard of it last year. So um, also the link will be in the blog post. Um, in also St. Lucy on the, on the 12th. Um, so another great Advent saint to, um, to have a look into and to teach the children about. Um, Our Lady of Guadalupe, somebody was asking about special foods during Advent. Um, it's a time of penance, so I don't think that the church really has feasts, you know, and, and also it'd be cultural, but I think a lot of people do a Mexican dinner on Our Lady of Guadalupe, which is the 13th. It happens to also be one of the Sundays of Advent. So that's kind of a fun idea. Um, also keep in mind that music can be played during Advent, but perhaps what we might wanna do is find a really good Advent playlist. My friend Mora uh, and I were talking about this and she's a great uh, celebrator of Advent. Um, and she said she'd be making a playlist on Spotify. So I'm calling her on that and asking her to get on it because we're all waiting for it. But I did find a few and I did add the link or the name of those um, onto the, um, the uh, blog post as well. So you'll have, you'll see those attached. Um, and I don't want to, you know, forget about the idea of going to confession. One of the things that I include in my advent calendar every year is an invitation for confession and the the uh, the uh, giving everyone and well everyone in my family is my husband and me and my son <laughs> who doesn't have he he can't really sin at this point he's not culpable <laughs> so um, yeah we we plan when we're gonna go to confession we make a date and we make it happen because 
especially this year, it's going to be a little more difficult. There won't be big uh, penitential services in the churches, so we'll have to make a special, uh, you know, make that a special uh, intention for ourselves. And um, uh, also, I, I just have these guys out because I had seen somewhere that cardinals were a sign of our deceased loved ones. So they're just kind of like a, a symbol that they're with you. It's not some something new age or anything. I think it's more just like when you see a cardinal, you think of the person. And both of my parents have passed. And so this year I bought two ornaments. I'm going to add them to my tree. They're little clip-on birdies. And um, they're my, you know, just a reminder that they're with us. And so in my advent calendar, I'm going to put these birds and also just a reminder and maybe tell my family a story about my, my, my parents. Um, you know, there's so many things I could uh, share about Christmas and what I've learned um, from my parents and how they showed us how to celebrate. So, yeah, I want to impart that on my family. Yeah, and um, one thing that my mom used to always do, uh, I guess she was, we were an immigrant family from Poland, and her, you know, kind of aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters, or brothers actually, were in Poland. So every Christmas Eve, um, she would put, uh, you know, sort of the black and white uh, photographs of her mother and her father uh, on mm. uh, the table. And mm. my mom also always had one um, tablecloth that was sort of from Zakopane, uh, and it was white linen with, you know, sort of pierced, it's not, not lace, but you know, the kind of, I'm talking about where the, the, the ladies have those big puffy things and they have the whole, so it's not quite lace. Yeah, yeah. It's got a tablecloth like that. And that uh -huh. tablecloth was only ever used on uh -huh. Christmas Eve. It was, you know, that's what it was. Um, and she insisted on Christmas Eve always having uh, 12 different things on the table, which represented yeah you know, the 12 different apostles. Um, can you tell us maybe a little bit about, I know it's not Advent, it's more Christmas Eve, Yeah. About the tradition of a Poitek? Oh, sure, yeah. Um, uh, that's a, a Polish tradition. I, I would imagine the Ukrainians do it. It's probably more like Eastern European in yeah, its right. origin. But it's, um, it's basically like unleavened bread. So if you go to a Polish deli, you can find it. It looks like, it looks like the host that they, that you get at communion, like a um, a wafer, like a wheat wafer, and it's obviously not consecrated or blessed. It's just meant to um, be the symbol of sharing bread. And um, we did this every Christmas Eve um, when we would gather. You would have a piece and you would share your uh, opwatek with every member of your family and give them a blessing for the new year. Um, um, it's it's a, it's a it's kind of intense a little bit actually. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's not my favorite because you know you want to be meaningful and it's, it's, I just say to my siblings, you know I love you. Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry if I've been an idiot, but I love you. <laughs> um, and I think um, I I was at a at a reconciliation service at the Ukrainian rite, um, and that was what they did before East uh, Christmas. Is they had this beautiful service where they hugged each other or they kissed each other and the whole congregation made amends for anything that they had done throughout the year um, and I think that's the same idea with the Opwatek is that you start over and and that's what Advent is about is getting us to that place where we can actually go to our siblings and our mom and dad and our spouses and say I love you and I'm sorry I'm not you know, I don't have any excuses for the way I behaved. Please forgive me. Let's start over. Merry Christmas. And then, um, actually, we do a, we do a a meatless dinner. So it's a by no means is it fasted because it's like <laughs> <laughs> pierogies and kapusta and um, all sorts of seafood yeah. and yeah, it's all sorts food. of you know, it's I always struggled with that. It's like, okay, we're not having any meat, but there's so much food here I can burn. <laughs> you know. Uh, so, I, I guess just a, a, a couple of things. You know, I'm definitely learning. This has been wonderful uh, for me personally too. So, you know, we want to exercise some restraint. We want to 
declutter and almost like make space for Christ and make space for the new decorations, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is, that, that's, I always do do the decluttering, but I, I, I guess I have to confess, I usually get those decorations to right. <laughs> maybe out Swap a little bit too. So I'm gonna definitely, uh, definitely think about that. And I guess the other thing that you uh, mentioned is having a, a, a visual focus and right. the visual focus could be the advent wreath, could be the nativity, and of course, keeping um, keeping Jesus out of the, uh, you know, and, and I've struggled with that. When I was a new mom and a new wife, that's what I was exactly what I was doing. And then as the kids got older, I got kind of lazy. I'm like, ah, just like put them in there now. And so this is kind of reminding me again to refresh my new wife uh, eyes, you know, because it's, I think when you're a new wife and you're a new mom and it's a new home. Uh, and then, you know, I, I guess we all have to be careful that as we grow in age that we don't grow in uh, indifference, right? So that's definitely something that uh, you're refreshing in me. Um, and then you said something new, right? Which is, uh, is something beautiful that brings something new into the home. The, the one thing that is really striking me through this entire presentation of yours, and I, I do think it's worth reflecting on, and I do think it's worth uh, mentioning, is that I know personally, Dorothy Polarski, like I've struggled with a little bit of workaholism, right? And so like you work, 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 work. And, and so when I wasn't working, I found that I had a lot more time, you know, to, to do some of these things. And I think we each have to remind ourselves that being a homemaker and being a mom and being a good wife, that it does require like a flip in mindset and it requires time, right? Uh, I think that what you're reminding me of is that, geez, I gotta set some time aside, uh, you know, because I, I think a lot of us, especially if you're working during the day and everything like that, you're sort of like plowing through all your work responsibilities and maybe not creating the time to create a home, right? right. And you're not taking the time to make the little, you know, beautiful uh, Advent gifts. Uh, and so it does require a bit of a discipline to pause from the, you know, perpetual working and saying, okay, no, like Advent is coming. And I, and, and I think, I don't know if any of you here are like have older children, um, you know, that that if you have older children and they're still at home, it really is a good idea to remember that they're still at home and still to do something special for them. Because I think there's a real temptation. I know there has been on my part to go, oh, they're older. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, this has been just a beautiful, beautiful uh, session. I really appreciate it. Um, so are there any uh, questions that any of you have? Well, look at this. You've got some beautiful comments here. I'm Aww. so inspired. Maya, thank you for sharing. Um, someone else, it's great to think about Advent and it'll be here soon. So thanks for giving us some very good ideas. I love the easy Advent wreath idea and the three <laughs> pointers. Um, uh, Peggy, hi, Peggy. How are you? I agree, Dorothy, with the older kids. Um, I feel the same. The, the one thing I think I'm, I'm going to do, um, I do want to get that book that you mentioned, because it might be an, a good Advent gift for the older kids, so that when they leave the house, they'll have a couple of beautiful things from home um, yeah. that, you know, that they can take with them. Um, I'm just going to share one book that I just got. And uh, it's so beautiful. Let me. Uh, I saw that on. I saw that on Amazon. Oh, it's so because like uh, some cause some books they touch like some of them. Some Catholic books you just kind of flip through it. You go, yeah, yeah, it's a Catholic book with Catholic characters. But this one really touched my heart. Our Lady's wardrobe, and uh, it shows Our Lady 
that she has all these different beautiful dresses. Yeah. So she appears in different places with all of these beautiful dresses, right? And uh, I think that it's so, it, 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 would, it would be really, really meaningful uh, because like, look at her beautiful dress there. And uh, I guess the reason it really spoke out to me is that when I was little, when I was like seven or eight, I kind of thought there were like 12 Hail Marys. Like I thought there were 12 moms <laughs> because right. the Mexican one looked like this. And the, I had no idea until I was older that they were all the same one, mm -hmm. right? And, and so again, the importance of having conversations with our children um, to explain certain things, right? And I, I, I love right. this beautiful book because it kind of explains she has different dresses, but it's the same, you know, it's the same uh, Mama Mary. Um, if any of you have any ideas that you'd like to share, uh, please post them. Oh, look at I Chloe also... saying, I, I'd like to say Merry Christmas to you and your family. Chloe, you're going to have to say Happy Merry Christmas to you <laughs> later. Not just to say, <laughs> um, such, uh, Andrea Schreiber runs a mother's ministry in the Kitchener-Waterloo area. Hello, Andrea. Such great ideas. I'm so pumped to prepare my home for Advent. Thank you, Maya, for sharing your gift of beauty and design. Um, someone is saying, can I show the book closer? Or do you want this book closer or do you want Maya's book closer? I'll do oh. mine too, just in case. Okay. This is available at madonnahouse.org. Okay. Madonnahouse.org. Um, the, the one thing I just wanted to say before we close is um, there's, you know, that book that you mentioned about Our Lady and her different dresses, it, it highlights also that, you know, our faith takes beauty very seriously. And um, beauty is, is one of the transcendentals um, of God, right? The things that God is, beautiful, true, good. And so beauty is really important. I can't live without it. I mean, um, Our Lady has beautiful dresses because Our Lady is the queen of the universe. And um, she, we, we, you know, if you're intimidated by making your home beautiful, I think what you got to focus on is not more decorating, is that you're more, more meaning making so that the things that you do have, make the meaning of them, make, the, make yourself more aware of their meaning. You know, why do we have a green, evergreen tree? It's because our Lord is eternal. You know, the, the life that he brings is everlasting. Um, so if you have an advent wreath, why do we surround it with the evergreens? So those are the things you, Instead of having a plastic wreath, get a real one and enjoy the beauty of God's creation in that way. Um, and beauty that lasts. So I know I, I put a plug in for the dollar store, but that's only a, a resource. If you know how to use that resource, use it. But don't abuse <laughs> the cheap stuff that's out there. Just don't go get more stuff. Um, have your beautiful things, polish your silverware. I love when my silverware is polished. I put it on my open shelving and I use it on Christmas morning. Everything is used, every crystal, every china dish, you know, all my good linens, because that's why I have it. It's for solemnities, for celebrating. Well, this, um, is the, this is beautiful. So someone that I know told me that they're kids uh, love cleaning because they know that Jesus is coming, you know, Aww. which is beautiful. Um, so a couple of people are asking, Maya, they can't see the book because you're kind of far away and they yeah. want to see. So can you bring it a little bit closer? Um, there we go. Donkey Bells by Catherine Doherty. Now, is that a children's book or is it? No, you know, what no, it's, it's her reflections on Advent and Christmas. Okay. And there are also the, oh, if you've heard of the O antiphons, um, those are the seven days before Christmas that the Vespers prayers include these, these calling out to God by his names. Before the Hebrew people encountered him, they had names for God. You know, O wisdom, O, um, I don't know what they are, but they all start with O, and that's why they're called the O antiphons. But anyway, there's also an Advent wreath blessing in here. And I just made a purchase at um, 
Madonna House Publications, and I got it within a few days. So you can for sure get this before Advent if you go online. Um, it's probably 16, 20 bucks or something. Okay. And they also have, yeah, they have great resources anyway. <laughs> Okay, no, 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 that's, no, th thank you. I'm, I'm really just delighted that, that you're here. Um, I, I would also like to, uh, you know, I know this is kind of always a bit of a sensitive area, but I'd, I'd really like to encourage um, each and every one of you, if you could, you know, consider visiting our website and making a, a small donation, if it's $5, if it's $4. I know that there's a, a mom that, uh, I'm not gonna say who she is because it would embarrass her completely, but you know, like every single month she makes a consistent donation to Catholic Moms mm -hmm. Group. And it helps because, you know, it, these sessions are free, but there are expenses associated with, um, you know, the, the Zoom account. There's expenses associated with uh, graphic design and everything. So if you would consider making a donation, you know, pray about it. You decide. You can go to our website, www.catholicmomsgroup.com. And uh, there's a donate button, um, really appreciate it. Now, a lot of you have been asking about um, the blog post of Maya's blog post. Uh, the reason that you can't find it <laughs> is because it's not up yet. So um, now that you've attended our, our session, what we will do is um, once it's ready, um, we're going to email it to everybody. So please, you know, be patient. Um, we're working on it as quickly and as diligently as um, we can. Um, you're going to love it. <laughs> Maya, you know, as much love as she put into this presentation, she put into uh, her blog post. There's a lot of information there. We're going to uh, share it with you. And so, um, when you see, you know, that you're getting uh, mail from us or e email from us, I should say, uh, you'll, I'm, I'm excited to share it once we've got it. Um, our ministry also has a very strong conviction to encourage moms to manifesting beauty, both in their mother's groups and at home. And so when we created our publication, How to Start a Mother's Group, we too, um, you know, created a full color, beautiful uh, publication on how to start a mother's group. Like, if this isn't beautiful, I don't know what is. <laughs> and someone asked me, well, Dorothy, you know, why didn't you just put it in a, a three ring binder? And it was again, like, why is it that everything that is Catholic has to be like ditto in a three ring right. binder and ugly. Like it doesn't <laughs> have to be. <laughs> like, and uh, you know, I remember when we first um, uh, published this and we self published it, I was feeling a little bit guilty because I thought, oh my gosh, you know, it would have been so much cheaper just to put a, get a dollar store binder. But then two or three days later, um, I got a catalog from Canadian Tire and it was full color and it was beautiful and it was encouraging people to shop, shop, shop during Advent. And I thought to myself, if Canadian Tire can have a beautiful magazine, our Blessed Mother surely <laughs> deserves a, a, a beautiful magazine. Our, um, our, our other publication, which is a 52 week study guide, has 52 week, there's 52 lessons in there uh, with five different parts. And again, it's beautiful, full color. Um, both of these resources are a part of our Mother's Group Starter Kit. Um, for any of you out there that have a Mother's Group, please do not use Protestant materials. It drives me crazy when Catholic parishes are going to mops and purchasing a mops kit because it exists and it's, <laughs> they don't believe in our blessed mother. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you know, we want moms to consecrate themselves, consecrate their families and remember that, you know, being 
uh, a mother is a sacred act. Anyway, I, I have to be careful. I can go on and on too long. <laughs> so, Dorothy, can I just say one last thing? Yes. I, I just want to publicly thank you for, um, as she mentioned, we, we've known each other my whole life, not her whole life, but um, <laughs> she's a family. And um, you've always been someone in my life, uh, especially as a child who's highlighted my gifts and called them out and encouraged me and it's meant so much to me getting becoming a, an adult i remember speaking to a, a therapist one day about my cousin dorothy who not because you injured me but because you blessed me you blessed what was good and you saw what was good and you called it out and i think there are maybe two or three other adults in my life that i would say that about so um you are a gift to me and i'm just so grateful um even today that you invited me to do this. It means so much. And uh, you do it for- you're, you're, you're getting me crying here. You, you do it for so many people and it's really your charism. Um, but I, I want, I mean, I, I was gonna write you a card, but I mean, this is much better. Say, I love getting your cards. Your cards are always so beautiful. And even if I get it two months from now, um, your cards are always so beautiful. This is much better and, uh, you know, save on postage, but no, really, thank you. Like really, um, I want to be that person in my nieces and nephews life who is that adult that they say that adult saw me and blessed me and I want to I you inspire me to be that adult for the young people in my life so thank you wow you're uh, yeah it's, not, it's very rare I'm speechless <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no I uh, you know like I, I, I struggle with a lot of insecurities, so uh, I, I really appreciate your, um, I appreciate your encouragement, and uh, you know, I, I just, I, I do have a strong conviction that we all have gifts that we need to use, right? Like, you know, and so thank you, thank you very, very much. Um, so I want to thank each and every one of you uh, for joining us today. It's a real you know, privilege to have you here in my kitchen and Maya's mm. kitchen. Um, really, really, uh, please know that we love you. And our ministry has two masses a month celebrated for uh, the moms that are part of our network. So please know that you're being prayed for. We also have another two masses a month being celebrated um, for all the women who have ever attended a Dynamic Women of Faith conference. So there's like four masses a month. Like if you've gone to both the Dynamic Women of Faith conference and you belong to the Mother's mm -hmm. Group Network, you got four masses being celebrated for you. So um, please know that we love you. Uh, I know someone here is saying that, you know, COVID has caused a lot of damage. I'm going to be, again, straight up with you. COVID for me has been a source of a lot of blessings <laughs> and I uh, you know I pray for people that you know are sick and yes it's very serious um, but you and I wouldn't be here today on zoom if it right. wasn't for COVID yeah and that lady from Puerto Rico Puerto Rico the hello lady Puerto Rico from South Africa right? that's crazy <laughs> Ireland we've had people from Germany so yeah yes we have to be careful and I talked once to my um, to my uh, spiritual director about this. I, I, I want you to imagine that you're walking your life with an umbrella. And I, I, I said to him, I said, Father Casper, uh, and this was many years ago, and it was a powerful spiritual breakthrough for me, is that I said, Father Casper, I kind of feel like I'm walking under a, an umbrella. And you know those kind of like spokes? And like one spoke is like a car accident I was in. Another spoke is like some marital difficulties I had. Another spoke was, you know, some challenges I had in family relationships. And so I said, I'm walking around with, I don't want to be living under these spokes, right? And so I went for the sacrament of reconciliation and I'm like, get the heck out of here spokes i want to be freed from these these um and so during advent too you know to to make sure 
you know, we don't want to look at COVID as like the, the spoke and then this is a spoke because we're putting ourselves in bondage, right? Yeah. Uh, we, we, we really need to be praying in thanksgiving for everything, right? For, if yeah. you have financial difficulties, praise God for it. If you know, you're yeah. having fights with your husband, praise God for it because when there's a time of peace, you're going to rejoice, you know, twice mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so giving praise and everything. Anyway, forgive me, I go on too long. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you uh, for joining us today. Um, How many were watching? Well, I'll tell you at the end, because right okay. now it tells us that there's 37 participants, but yeah. it waves i can tell you at the end when i get a, i get a report so i'll tell yeah, you yeah yeah that's that's great once we get a report right now there's 37 there was a time where there was 47 um but when i get the report i'll let you know exactly uh, how many people were here so anyway my little closing song i'm so glad we had this time together <laughs> <laughs> just to have a laugh or sing a song seems we just get started and before you know it comes a time we have to say Woo, so long okay uh love you um and again please know that our mothers groups are different they're longer we usually play a full rosary we have a piece of county then we do a call to action so the the actual mothers group is a little bit longer this gives you just a little flavor of what some of the mothers groups are like but please know that we love you we're praying for you maya from the bottom of my heart thank you for your time Thank you for all of your hard work. You're welcome. Thank you for all of the beauty that you've brought into so many people's lives. And uh, you're, a, you're a pioneer with those chickens. <laughs> 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 and uh, I love you all the way from Mississauga to California. Yes. I love you and uh, thank you for your yes today. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. My pleasure. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. And please email us. We love hearing from you. Bye bye.